Hello, I'm Solar Loom, and this is part three of my tutorial series on drawing pixel art. This one will deal with light and shadows. Um, light and shadows are pivotal in a lot of pixel art. You don't have to use them, but if you do and use them well, they can be really eye catching. So we'll be looking into that today. All right, so let's draw a character uh, to demonstrate light and shadows on. That's the best, uh, probably the best thing uh, just for demo. So let's draw a character. This character that I thought up a few seconds ago and had a quick little test at drawing it looks like this. Okay, wait a second. Let's yeah, make sure he's bright red, not dark red. All right. And as you probably can see, he's not unlike a quote from Cave Story. He's kind of similar in the way he looks and everything. Well, yeah. So I'm not the most original guy, but still, it's just a demo. <laughs> so this is our character. Now if we wanted to shade him, generally we want to pick, pick a light source and then uh, add shadows away from that light source. So what I like to do is use usually the upper right corner and uh, shade him from that direction. So as you can see I drew a little arrow. That's where the light's coming from. Here. And it strikes him here. Or, you know, on the upper right corner. And shadows naturally fall on the opposite sides. So when you're looking at how to shade characters, generally it's kind of uh, difficult because you're thinking about 3D again. A lot of people, or some people, some pixel artists or, or game developers, shade characters like this, simply shading the top portion of them. And it makes them look kind of flat. It's not bad, but it makes them look flat, like they don't have any dimension. What we want to do is give the effect through shading that they have dimension, that they have a physical shape, and, and like they're, well, like they, there's depth there. So what you want to do is think in 3D while you're shading. All right, so we know that our light's coming from up here, right? So we know that shadows are going to be down here. Simply doing this is kind of enough because it gives the effect that his head is round. Like it's not just a flat piece and it's not like it's just a cube. It looks like it's kind of round. It's kind of got a little depth to it. Obviously, the more shadows you add, the more depth he gets. Now, you want to be careful about adding too much shadows because you don't want your character to be like this, a lot, a large portion of him in the shadows. But, well, this isn't that bad, actually. Mainly because, you know, it gives a little balance. Like, this portion is lit, this portion is not. It's logical. Like that. But notice how it makes his head look kind of like a cylinder. If you're not going for that look, then you obviously wouldn't like this. If you want him to look more like his head's just kind of round, obviously you would go for something like this. Now, when you're shading objects, you don't really want to have a situation like this, where it's just shading all over the, the mesh, or all over the uh, sprite, because it kind of looks messy. Like, it doesn't, it's not appealing to the eye, it's not sharp and clear. You want shading that's well-defined. You don't want to have just, like, random... You know, pixels that pick up and drop off and stuff like that. You want it to be uh, logical because he's supposed to be a logical shape. If his head is round, then shadows would pretty much start and stop on a definite place, either on a curve or, you know, on, on the surface of his face. They wouldn't just like pick up over here or over there, you know, not some over here, some over there. You want to make sure that they're even. All right, so moving on. Let's draw him over here. Now, notice that this area is underneath his head. Since his head is big, and it's thick, it's thicker than his, than his neck, this portion should be shaded. Regardless of uh, how much light it's, it's getting, or, you know, top right shading, his head's over it, so it's dark. and it's lo That's logical. Same thing over here, same thing over there. You know, you just darken him as you would see fit. And so that's not so bad. Of course, this guy's really small, so it, shading on him is a little difficult to explain, or difficult to show. So let's show it on a larger scale. Let's shade something else. Let's shade, picking a random object here, let's shade um, something like grass. Yeah, let's shade it like a tile of gra grass, like a block. So let's go over here, pick a nice brown for the dirt. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now let's get a nice green. We don't want it to be too green. Like so. Let's 
shade the top part. I mean, sorry, uh, draw the top part. All right. You want to draw some interesting little things hanging down. All right. And let's give a little detail to the um, to the dirt. Give some rocks sitting in there. Now, if you notice, the dirt and the grass are basically just flat. They don't give a lot of dimension or depth. The reason for this is because they're one color. So we want to add shading. So the dirt, I mean the grass, logically would get light from the top right corner. So let's get a little bit of shading up here. Not too much, but some. Okay. Now notice I don't go all the way down because this is Remember, thinking in 3D, this is deep. This is underground, so it wouldn't get any light. It would be, it wouldn't really get any light. It would be black. But because it's a game, we want to keep it, you know, bright and lively. So it gets a little light, and so it's, you know, dark but not bright, full darkness. Now, the dirt isn't getting any light, but it would get shadows, and or it might get shadows from the dirt. So let's try that. Let's try shading the dirt a little bit. Remember, the light's coming from the top right. So remember that we're shading the grass here, because the shadows are coming from the top right, like uh, the light source we set up, we, we are working with mentally. This pixel's there because, you know, it loops. Not bad. Of course, you could always add more detail to the dirt. Like so. Now, I'm making this darker because, you know, as you go further down, the colors get darker. And so, logically, if this is the color of the dirt of the rock up here, but this is darker, you know, because there's less light, this should be the color of the light rock, and the dark rock should now be what color? Black. Because there's no color down there. There's, this is the dark rock. This is the dark rock in dark light, so it should be basically black. And so we just get a, a little bit of shading. A lot of people don't do that. Um, a lot of people don't shade objects according to what um, the object is doing or what the object is, what the state of the object is. Let me give a quick example. Say I drew a tree like this. Um, wait, yeah, like that. Like this is a palm tree. I know this is probably going to turn out bad, but I'm not sure. Yeah, say this is a palm tree that I'm drawing here. I'm, ju I'm just using the grass color. I really should use a darker color because trees aren't really grass colored, but it's not turning out so bad. Let's just continue drawing. So this is a palm tree here. All right, that's what I'm like missing. Here we go. Uh, I almost forgot. We're shading from the top right. I just now realized I shade usually from the top left. That's why I'm weird myself out is because it's kind of weird for me. Alright. Okay, so yeah, that, that little area is thinking in 3D. This is a portion of, of the leaf. This is a portion of the leaf. This is below this because this is close, close to the camera. So we shade it like that. We give a little shadow on this leaf because of the leaf here going up. And this leaf pretty much gets no, none shadow, no shadow because it's close to the camera, uh, close to the sun. We could also give a little bit more, just to, let's go like this, a little bit more, just give it a little highlight. There we go. Don't forget to give it a little texture. Um, texture can be just like a few lines, just kind of like crossing kind of gives the effect of, yeah. Kind of gives the effect of a, of tree leaves, like it's not really even. Okay, so back to the, back to the um, leaf, oh, right, to the shading. So this is our dirt, let's get, or our, um, I can't even think of what I'm trying to say. This is our uh, bark, our tree bark. Now notice that I darken this area because obviously it's under the tree. 
Now, I could use, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Now, notice, however, since this tree is here, shouldn't this grass be dark? Logically, you know, light cast down, pretty much downward at this angle. So, by the way, that little angle lock is shift and control. But since the light's casting down at this angle, this area should be dark. And I think it would add a little bit more realism and detail if we did that. So let's do that. That's, that's actually, that should be there. That little pixel does make a difference. Alright, so let's try that. And since this area is dark, we could darken this area too. Let's try that. A lot of pixel art is also about just experimentation, trying different things, seeing if it works out well, and if it really does give the effect that you're going for. If it doesn't, then obviously you should go back, but if it does, then you just learned a new technique. So, it's something to think about. So I'm darkening everything below the shadowed area. This is probably going to be split into two different portions. Um, this tutorial is so I can give the full effect here. And get a darker color here. Not bad. It's kind of interesting. Obviously that wouldn't really that wouldn't really happen. It wouldn't darken that whole area. But it would darken the grass. So that's actually <laughs> before I just go nuts. It's but yeah, it was an interesting effect. I didn't like it personally, but I did learn that I did like it enough to adapt it to what I was doing. And so the end result is not that bad. It's pretty logical. It looks pretty good. Pixel art should be logical generally. strands popping up. Oh, let's give it a flower. <laughs> Just because we can. Perfect. Oh, you can't really see the flower. Yellow doesn't go well, by the way. Yellow doesn't go well um, flower, uh, on white. Oh, look at the. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty logical. It looks good. Uh, the shading on here could be better, but it's not that bad. Let's add a little detail. Add another level of shading. You don't want to go crazy with the shading. Usually you want either two or three levels. Um, uh, I was going to add another level. That's fine. But overall, that's that's pretty good. It's pretty good shading-wise. Okay. So thanks for watching um, this tutorial. This one was a little long. Um, thanks. This was uh, the tutorial on light and shadow. If you feel like donating to help me uh, make more tutorials, I'd be happy to accept it. Um, if, you feel, if you have any tutorial suggestions, feel free to suggest them, and I'll see if I can get to them. Okay, thanks for watching. I've been Solar Moon. Have fun with GIMP uh, making pixel art.